Shauna Jefferson, and I'm here on behalf of the American Heart Association. I thought instead of making your typical um, 10 to 12 or 14 to 16 pound turkey, I'm gonna show you what you can do instead and still have your, your turkey dinner without having too much leftover turkey. So the first thing we're gonna do is get started with the mom's roasted turkey with roasted butternut squash and asparagus. So what we're gonna need is a turkey. And so like I mentioned before, we're doing a COVID friendly turkey today. So what this is actually, this is actually what's called a turkey roast. So it's a combination of white meat and dark meat turkey that has been deboned and then it's been put together in a roast. And so the reason why you see the net here is just to keep the meat together while it cooks. So we're gonna start off with this turkey roast and this turkey roast actually weighs about three pounds. So it's enough to feed a, for a family of four comfortably. So if your, your family, if your immediate family is, is larger than four people, what you could do is just buy two of these. And then once again, you're not left with a whole lot of leftover turkey and you don't have to argue over who's going to carve the turkey or worry about someone who doesn't know what they're doing carving your turkey. So we've got our roast here and then our other ingredients, two ribs of celery, two carrots, half of the large onion or one small onion, canola oil, garlic, minced garlic, You've got seasonings here, and this is a combination of seasonings. Rosemary and thyme and basil, just a lot of great, um, a lot of great dried herbs here that are gonna give the turkey a nice flavor, boost of flavor. And then we have some pepper, and then we have what I call my magic all-purpose seasoning. This is great because it's actually gonna add additional flavor to the turkey without adding any sodium or salt. Give me a moment. I'm just gonna put on some gloves here. Makes it a lot easier and a lot safer when dealing with turkey because we don't want any issues with salmonella or any sort of food poisoning. So I have my turkey here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the canola oil and my dried herbs and mix them together. Stir this up. So it's gonna make kind of a paste. Okay. So I have that, that stirred up. And what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna actually go ahead and add my minced garlic to it. Since this is minced and it's pretty fine. That way what I can do is rub it all on my turkey at the same time. So I've mixed that up and I've made my paste. And what I'm gonna do is go ahead and first of all, just add my salt-free magic all-purpose seasoning. Just rub that all over the turkey. And then I'm gonna add my pepper. And if you're not a big pepper fan, you know, you can cut out the pepper or cut back on the pepper. But pepper does give a nice flavor boost, especially since we're not using salt. Okay, and then what I'm gonna do is spoon my oil and herb mixture and garlic. And I just rub this all over the turkey. Make sure you get it in there where it's gonna coat the turkey. And the oil, will be, the oil is great because it's gonna prevent your turkey from drying out in the oven. So, got that. Just finish rubbing that in there. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is take our, prepare our onions, our celery, and our carrots. So two ribs of celery here. I'm gonna peel a carrot. And this combination of onion, celery, and carrots 
is the backbone of cooking and it has a nice French name called mirepoix. So it's onions, celery, and carrots. And it's the backbone of seasoning or vegetable seasoning in all of your cooking. So we have our two carrots and our celery. And we're just going to cut it into a medium dice. You don't want your pieces to be too small because when you cook it in the oven, they will cook away to nothing. So you don't want them to be too small, but you don't want them to be too large either because you do want them to be nice and tender. Celery, carrots, and then our onion. So now what I'm going to do, since we don't have a turkey with a cavity, what I am going to do is, especially with the onion, just take some of the onion and I can make a hole in between the netting and actually stuff some of the onion inside the cavity. Okay. So and then the remainder of the vegetables, I'm actually just going to surround, put them in the pan and surround the turkey. And now that I'm done with this, what I'm going to do is I've preheated my oven to 425 degrees. So I'm going to put the roast in there and get it started in the oven at 425 degrees. And then after about 30 minutes, I'm going to turn the oven down to between 350 and 375 degrees, cover the turkey roast with foil and let it continue to cook. But what the initial 425 degrees, what that's going to do is give you a really nice brown sear on your turkey roast and make it nice and pretty. The butternut squash is a great, healthy, low sugar alternative to your typical candy yams or, or our sweet potato casserole with the mushrooms that we usually have on Thanksgiving. And what I've taken is, taken this is about a medium butternut squash cut into pieces here. And then what we're gonna do is add two tablespoons of honey two teaspoons of cinnamon, and some dried herbs. So rosemary, thyme, basil, and we're gonna mix that up very well. And you're gonna make sure that you coat every single piece of your butternut squash with that honey, cinnamon, honey, and dried herb mixture. I'm gonna take a quarter sheet pan and I've lined mine with parchment paper. If you don't have parchment paper, that's fine. You can just spray it with some nonstick spray or even line it with foil. And you can see how the combination of the honey and the cinnamon makes a really nice glaze. You wanna bake it till it's nice and crisp crispy on the outside, but soft on the inside. So you're looking at 350 degrees for about 35 to 45 minutes. Okay, and then the next item is our asparagus. So I have a pound of asparagus here. And what you wanna do with asparagus is in order to get rid, you don't want these woody ends because it makes it unpleasant to eat the asparagus. So what you do is just find that breaking point and just, Break it off. Now, for those of you who are concerned about waste, you do have another option to breaking off the asparagus. You can take a potato peeler and basically just peel that part off of the asparagus, that tough part off of the asparagus. Cause it just depends on what you prefer. I prefer just to break my asparagus off. And sometimes the ends, you don't, they don't necessarily have to go to waste. You can roast them or saute them and put them in a food processor and then just add a little seasoning to it and you've made something called an asparagus coulis that you can just use as, I almost like a sauce. Okay, so I've got my asparagus here with all the tough ends removed. And the next thing I'm gonna do is add about a tablespoon of lemon juice 
Then I have some olive oil. Got two cloves of mixed garlic. And then pepper. So I'm gonna mix all this together. Then I'm gonna put my asparagus. Line it up on the sheet pan with some parchment paper. And then just gonna drizzle the lemon juice, garlic, olive oil mixture over the asparagus. Then we're gonna put that in the oven and bake at 350 until it's crisp tender. So we have a beautiful turkey roast, some great butternut squash, and then some nice tender yet crunchy asparagus. So what we're gonna do is just plate this up. And we're gonna add it to this nice platter here. Then we're just gonna surround it with some asparagus. Then we've got Squash. Then, of course, it's not complete, but some of these great roasted vegetables. So we have it there, and then we're going to just braise this with some of the juice. Okay, so we have this awesome. Set a nice festive table here. We have some decorative gourds and carrots there. Isn't that a beautiful plate? Heart healthy, diabetic friendly. Mom's roasted turkey with roasted butternut squash and asparagus. So now we're gonna move on to our second side that goes along with it. And we're gonna make your traditional green bean casserole, but we're gonna make it uh, Heart healthy and diabetic friendly. So one pound of frozen green beans, preferably French style, just because they're gonna cook a little faster. So we've got some French style onion, French style green beans. And then the next thing we're gonna do is make the sauce. And the sauce consists of heart healthy, reduced or low sodium, Cream of mushroom soup, half a cup of sour cream, pepper, and a salt free seasoning mix. We're gonna mix that together. We're gonna take this and add it to our green beans. Then we're gonna mix this up in the pan. You make sure all of your green beans are nicely coated and then we're just going to spread it out spread it out evenly so we have our green bean mixture and we're going to take this and we're going to put it in the oven bake it at 350 for about 20 minutes okay so while your green beans are cooking what we're going to do is we're going to make the onions because everybody knows that green bean casserole comes with onions so I've got half of a sweet onion here. This is a large sweet onion, so I have half of it, or you can use a, a whole small onion. I'm just gonna cut it, put the onions on the sheet pan. I'm gonna spray it with a little nonstick spray. So this is just some olive oil. And then I have about a quarter cup of whole wheat flour. So we're gonna coat the onions in the whole wheat flour. Mix them, make sure they're coated. Put the flour in the oil, we'll make sure the flour sticks to the onions. I'll spray the skillet with some nonstick spray. Fillet is heated up. I'm gonna add the onions to the skillet. But between the oil that we sprayed on the onions and the oil we sprayed in the skillet, 
going to give the onions a nice coating. And that flour is going to provide some crispness. And I have some over here that I've already pre-prepared so you can see how they look. So here you have onions and you see that the um, between the oil and the flour, we've got some nice crisp onions here that we're going to add to our casserole, our green bean casserole, once it's done in the oven. Okay, so we're back. Our green beans have had an opportunity to cook for about 20 minutes. So we're gonna take half of the onion mixture and we're gonna mix it in with our green bean casserole. We're gonna take the remaining onions and just top the casserole with them. So you've got onions mixed in the casserole, and then you've got this great topping. And when you combine the green bean casserole with the roast turkey, voila, you've got this great, heart-healthy, diet-ready, friendly meal. So bon appetit, everyone.